Well, hello, everyone. This is Wilson Cole, and I am president of Adams, Evans, and Ross. And of course, we work with about uh, 3,000 staffing and recruiting firms uh, nationally, and uh, we have for the last 27 years. And we collected about a billion dollars in staffing and recruiting debt. And um, I'm excited to uh, talk to you about uh, the, the next subject. It's not going to be a particularly long webinar, but uh, I, can, I can tell you if you invest the next 10 or 15 minutes um, on, uh, on this subject, on how to speed up your cash flow, it, it's going to make for a few less sleepless uh, nights going forward. I, I can pretty much guarantee you that. Um, you know, over the years, you know, we, we noticed uh, a couple of trends uh, that help speed up cash flow. We've used it in our, our own companies and uh, we've used it with uh, overseeing um, staffing um, uh, department, uh, credit, credit collections departments, uh, and we've seen it speed up their cash flow as well. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is if you have a specific question, I want you to email me. Uh, you can email me wilson at AER collections uh, with an S at the end dot com and ask me any question that you want. And during the webinar, if it, at an appropriate time, I'm going to answer it. If I don't have time or if it's too specific or because of time restraints, uh, what we'll do is either myself or somebody from my staff will reach out to you and answer the question in, in a more specific, um, uh, a more specific and direct way. Um, now, for everybody that uh, that uh, stays on the webinar for its entirety, we've got uh, some some uh, free collateral uh, stuff that we're going to talk about here, and one is the uh, the wording for the secret weapon, which we're going to talk about uh, uh, on um, it's the the number two way, and then also um, we'll have some other stuff for you as well. But let's go ahead and get started. Let me first say, I am always asked, Wilson, why do clients pay me slow? And I'm not being facetious when I say it, but 90% of the time, it's because you have trained them to pay you slow. And what we need to do is we need to get uh, into a different rhythm, a different expectation. Now, I'm not saying be abusive. Uh, I, I can tell you, uh, doing this for 27 years now, uh, collections, I can tell you, uh, my faith in humanity ha has grown each year because 95% of the folks want to do the right thing, even the ones that don't pay. It, it wasn't that they intended on not paying you. It's that they misjudged cash flow. Um, and uh, so there's, there's things that you can do to help mitigate those risks and um, just kind of help speed up cash flow. So with your clients, they're wonderful clients. And I would argue that the fact that you have a wonderful sales relationship with them is probably why they turn over a lot of business to you. But I can also tell you, those are the clients that will probably pay you the slowest. And it's because there's, there's uh, a relationship there that there's other dynamics that you brought in, uh, which is, you know, they, they look at it and they say, well, hey, Steve knows I'm, I'm good for it. I just told him about, you know, we had our cash flow issues, but he's going to work with me. We've done business together for 20, 25 years and or, you know, two years or three years. So he's going to he's going to uh, stay with it. And, and he, he knows we're good for it. And they may be good for it, but it's still going to slow down your cash flow. So let's go ahead and get into the specifics of the three things that you can start doing today to speed up your cash flow. And I can tell you this stuff works. And my absolute favorite one is eliminate any invoice that you have that has payment within 10 days, payment within 30 days, uh, or due upon receipt. Because we all know due upon receipt really just means 30 days. 10 days means eh, kind of pay it on the short side of 30 days, but if it goes 45, who cares? 30 days really means 30, maybe 60, maybe 90 days. 
uh, no one really pays attention uh, to, to those, those issues. And when they load them into their system, is it 30 days from when you mailed the invoices? Or if even if it's a bigger corporation, is it 30 days from when it just worked its way through two weeks of their uh, red tape and is now sitting in accounts payable? No. What I want you to do, and you can do it with QuickBooks or any other accounting software that you use, change the net 10 days, net 30 days to a specific date. Credit card companies, power companies, anybody that is in, involved in major cash uh, management and, and, and billables and receivables have all gone this route. And I can tell you the reason is because it works. And I'll, I'll share with you a personal story on how it, how it resolved uh, some issues that we had. Uh, if you go into your setting, though, and change it, like if you were to send out something uh, today and assuming today was, you know, January 5th, uh, you wouldn't say net 30 days. Uh, you would say it would be due February 4th or February 5th or February 3rd, whatever magical date that you wanted to put in there. And let me tell you how this worked for us is, uh, of course, at the end of the day, I, I've done Adams. I, I, I created Adams, Evans, and Ross almost 30 years ago. This is what I do at the end of the day. I'm a collection guy, and uh, and, and I love uh, being able to make sure that our clients' uh, uh, financial futures are, are, are safeguarded, and, and we collect all the funds for them and all of that good stuff. I also own several other companies that I'm not involved in on a day-to-day -day basis. One of them is Recruiting and Staffing Solutions Magazine and uh, Recruiting and Staffing Solutions uh, Marketing Solutions. But on the magazine, back a number of years ago, in one of the slowdowns, we had some advertisers that started running behind. And I was sitting in on a meeting, and they, they I looked at the receivables, and I said, guys, the receivables starting to stretch out. This is kind of embarrassing. Uh, you know, I, I teach this stuff for a living. What do we need to do to get these receivables back into shape? And they said, you know, we've been calling. We've been, you know, we, it's just really been difficult. Um, and I said, well, we're going to have a meeting on Thursday. Let me do some research and, and we'll find a way to resolve it. And so I kind of went out and I ran across this technique and uh, with, you know, using the specific date. Uh, and so we tried it. And we had one advertiser in particular that would pay us anywhere between 45, realistically, sometimes he'd pay two or three payments, but he'd be you know, pushing in on 60 days. And uh, you know, our, our terms were net 10. So, I mean, it, he was significantly behind. Good guy, great guy, one of the, uh, the, the better known vendors in the industry. Uh, but, but he was just kind of stringing out. And it was because he didn't know what the expectation was, in my opinion. So as we moved to this new specific date, I can remember I got a call specifically from him and it was uh, you know, due on, let's say, May 15th. And this was, uh, this was like on the 13th or 14th. He called me back and he says, Wilson, I just want to let you know I got in an invoice and I wanted to call you personally uh, so, so you'd hear it from me. He says, yo, I know this bill's due on the 15th. But uh, we've got a little bit of a cash flow issue, and it's going to be the 25th. It could be the 30th before I pay this invoice. And that's, that's why I said, that's fine. That's fine. Just send it in at that point. I'll notify them, and they'll look for it on, you know, by, by the end of the month. Well, the interesting thing about it, and he did send in, did exactly what he said he was going to do. He was calling me two days before the bill was due because he was going to be two weeks late. He had not called us at all when he was running 45 and almost 60 days behind. And within a very short period of time, our receivables, we almost, uh, you know, our, our receivables all just, uh, there was absolutely nothing behind, you know, the 30-day mark. Now, the, the thing about that is even with big companies, it works because when they load it into the computer, they're looking at the invoice and they'll put, oh, the due date is X. And so they put that due date in there to pay. If it's a small mom and pop, uh, then they're going to either use some type of computer or if they're using the old method of, you know, here's, here's the files of, of the bills that need to be paid. Well, they put them in there. Well, the one that has the due date is going to be up towards the top versus in the bottom of 30 days. And they really don't know when that bill's due. They just know it's within 30 to 60 days of it. So that is one of the biggest things that you can do. 
The other thing that I want you to do, and I want you to borrow from uh, the secret weapon of the uh, collection industry and even the legal industry, uh, and that is the sequential uh, letter series. And these letters can be postcards, they can be letters, they can be invoice stuffers. They don't have to be abusive of, oh, you know, because I had one client, you know, years ago when we used to oversee credit departments, she said, Wilson, there's absolutely no way I'm going to alienate these clients that are only two and three weeks behind. And by sending them a, you know, a, you pay or be shot letter, I said, no, I said, you misunderstand. We're not going to send a pay or be shot letter because there's no reason to be uh, abusive. We just want a reminder what your terms are. And I think her terms at that point were 10 days. It could have been 30 days. It was right in there. But what we had decided to do is we created these little postcards. And uh, it, it, we actually had uh, uh, three sheets or three colors that we used. Uh, we had a green, a yellow, and a red uh, poster board. And we uh, would put these postcards, we'd put them three to a sheet and then cut them. And what we would do at that point is if they were seven days behind, there was one that basically said, hey, just uh, want to let you know our, our terms are you know, net 30. Um, if you would take a look, make sure you got these invoices and uh, you know, let us know if there's a problem. Then we'd wait uh, a couple of weeks and then we'd send out the yellow one. And the yellow one one said, hey, we sent you out a notice on this. Is there a problem? Uh, if there is, if you didn't receive it or you know, if, if there's a problem, please call me. Uh, to discuss, you know, resolving it. Then the red one would go out about two weeks after that. That basically said, you know, we've we've sent you a couple of notices. This account is now past due. Uh, please call me today to discuss resolution. So very very benign um, letters, but they they let the debtor know that we knew they were behind. And the uh, client of ours, you know, when she read them, she says, okay, that's not too offensive. We'll go ahead and use them, but they're not going to work. I can tell you I've done this 20 some odd years. And uh, she says, it, it's not going to work. This client specifically, they always pay us late. Well, lo and behold, uh, the first time that we sent out, they're a relatively decent sized company. We probably sent out 150 postcards. The following month, we sent out probably 100 uh, the month after that was probably 20, 25. Month after that, maybe two or three. Two things happened is we trained them to pay, but we know that the postcards worked because the checks would come in and specifically the check from the gentleman that she says, oh, he always pays us late. Uh, on the second notice, the check came in stapled to the postcard. So we know that they work. And so, you know, you can set up phone calls and phone calls work. Phone calls are very effective. But if, especially with smaller businesses, the person that's working AR may be your personal assistant, may be a clerk that handles 10 different other tasks. If she has five things on her plate, she may not want to make those calls. The calls don't always get made. I can tell you the letters always get sent. So that's the second thing that you can do. The third thing that you can do is use credit lines. And you say, Wilson, that makes no sense at all. Uh, you know, if we have credit lines, of course, you know, we use credit lines. We don't use credit lines. That's not going to speed up cash flow. Oh, it absolutely will. Because if you use credit lines properly, you're going to set up, you know, let's say there's somebody that's kind of marginal. They pay a little slow. You're going to give them a $5,000 credit line. Well, when they start getting, you know, at week three, uh, you know, they have a surge and they're up to forty five hundred or you know sixty five hundred dollars. You can pick up the phone and say, "Hey, Steve, um, you know, your credit line's five thousand dollars. You, you're over the credit line. I'm going to go ahead and I've approved it because we we certainly don't want to you know uh, uh, slow down your services on it. But I need for you to cut a check to bring us back current." And it is the exact same thing. I mean, somebody may be a wonderful $5,000 credit risk, but a horrible $50,000 credit risk. And if you are utilizing a Visa or a MasterCard or whatever, you know, it, they, they're going to have a, a, a limit on it. And when you get up and over that limit, they say, even if you have it, you know, even if it's not due for you to be able to utilize it uh, anymore, you, you have to pay it down. And so that's what you need to do as far as on that. Now, if you would like to receive a copy of those three, the wording, and it's basically simple wording, uh, you can create something much more complex. But if you want to see the wording that we utilized 
on our uh, postcards, you can send me an email, wilson at aercollections.com, and uh, put in their uh, letter series in the subject field. My assistant will see it, and she'll shoot that over to you. If you have uh, any issues that you'd like to discuss on collections, or if you want us to look for backdoor hires with our software, give me a shout. I'm at uh, 800 452 5287. I'm at extension 6578. Thank you for joining me.